Hi, and welcome to our video channel. We're Rivka and Shlomo of the marriagerestorationproject.com. We are bringing to you our very first video blog. Um, we have a podcast called Can This Marriage Be Saved? And we decided that it would be really fun to talk to you guys on video while doing our podcast episodes. So if you're watching us on video, hello. And be sure to subscribe to our channel so you get notified of upcoming videos that we release. If you prefer to listen through audio, be sure to check out the Can This Marriage Be Saved podcast. And now for today's topic, we want to talk about why communication stinks. Why is it so difficult? What are people doing wrong with communicating? Because as you probably know, which is why you're here, you're looking to improve your communication at home. So you know by now that it's really critical to have communication go well at home because otherwise everything ends up into a fight. Everything ends up being bickered about and just constant negativity. And so it's really important for you to learn how to shift the energy. So Shlomo is our marriage counselor and relationship expert. So we'd love to hear from you about what are couples doing wrong with communicating and what can they do to fix it? Sure. Now, communication is something that I would say that every couple, no matter what what their needs are, no matter how big the crisis is, there's always a communication issue. Um, because a communication issue really is symbolic of the, of the relationship as a whole. Because communication is the way that we interact with another person. You know, unless you can read someone's mind or their heart. Usually, the only way to really understand what's going on and interact with another is through communication whether verbal communication and even even nonverbal if you have a scowl on your face you can your spouse is going to tell how you feel or like moment. yeah when is this conversation <laughs> going to be over right so, so you're talking about body language yeah too. i mean that's that's another way of that's another form of communication expressing so you have to work on your communication and we have to understand why the communication is 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 challenged and so it's a holistic approach. It's not just some type of little technique that you learn to fix communication. It really, it really addresses everything. It's the, it's the quickest way to really deal with the core of the relationship. So, so you're saying that communication is not just about techniques or ways of talking. It's actually indicative of the core of the relationship. Yeah, it's a, of the relationship health, of the, of the relationship, um, of the safety that you feel with your partner. Because if you don't feel safe, then you express that in either not talking or talking in a certain way or a critical way or uh, um, not feeling open or your nonverbals that you show. So if you can feel safe, if you can feel connected, then your communication is going to come across the way you interact will be different. Conversely, if you change the way you communicate, you change your brain, you change the way that you interact and then that also has a so you can you can get it get, go from either end wow so this sounds actually like a huge uh, concept really meaningful because am i hearing right that what you're saying is if you change the safety of your relationship the communication will change or if you change the communication of your relationship you will feel more safe so which comes first like the chicken or the egg right so the you know you i find the easiest way and what we do with couples is teaching them a different way to communicate putting an artificial structure that can slow the brain down that can get the brain out of that reactive state out of that triggered state into a more you know frontal lobe and into a more conscious and intentional state and when you do that the body you you, physio you change the whole physiology when you change the brain you change the way the body feels you change your, your emotions and you're much more able to engage in a, in a productive way. So I find that the easiest way is you change, you know, change the brain by changing the way you communicate, by slowing things down and putting a, you know, artificial structure, not like the typical way that we back and forth and very quick. Running quick, from reactive, room to room. Yeah, just really to slow down intentional way. And as you change the brain, you change the way you feel with each other and you, you come up with a whole different type of relationship. Wow, who knew that there was a brain connection to your communication, guys? I hope that you're writing this down because that's actually a huge aha moment. And we should have another video talking about the brain, and we will in another episode. Shlomo, tell us, what are, let's say, four mistakes that you see people making in communication? Sure. So, I mean, one mistake I think if, if you could master this, uh, change half of the interactions will be different is finding the right time or the mistake is that we don't have the right time. So 
Now you can use common sense. If your spouse is coming in from a long day of work and they're hungry, tired and hungry, you know, you just start brought, you know, dumping on them the minute they open the door. Honey, or, I have a whole list of things for you to fix. Or yeah, that, at least that's better <laughs> or than honey, other things. I'm done with the kids. It's your turn. Right. So that's probably not a good thing or to confront them with something they did. Uh, probably not a good idea. I'm really mad at you yeah. because you did this today. Right. You didn't call me and you came home late. And why'd you come home late? Right. Probably not smart. What, how do you think your spouse is going to react at that moment? They're going to be caught off guard and they're going to go right into defensive mode. So you have to think a little bit about what's the intention of your interchange. Do you want, you just want to dump on the, on your spouse? Do you want to make them feel bad? Do you want to punish them? Okay. There may be a part of that there, a little bit of anger, but it's more about, I'm not happy with what happened. I want a change. I want to see something different. It's hard at the end of the day though. You know, if you, if you're home with the kids and you're waiting for your spouse to come home and you're kind of mentally done, how can you, how can you sort of do that at the end of the day? No. Well, life is about becoming being intentional and being in a relationship is about acknowledging that there is someone else in this relationship other than you and that all because you feel a certain way you need to be a little bit more intentional in thinking about how is this going to impact the other person are they available and from a selfish perspective is it going to get me my results so you mean you can't just lash out at someone whenever you want to no, sorry <laughs> Coming from a very highly reactive home, that was a huge new concept for me when we first got married 20 years ago. And you can read more about our story at the marriagerestorationproject.com. But that was one of my very first learning experiences in our beginning years. Like, oh, I can't just talk to this person because I'm mad at them the way I want to and blame them and yell at them. Like, oh, what a, yeah. what a concept. <laughs> anyway. Is not to interrupt you. So you right, were so saying you, if you want to get the results again, think about it. if you want the results, if you want someone again, you don't want to put them on the defensive. You want them to be receptive because let's say you want them to change. I don't like that you come home late every day from, from work or I don't like that you don't help me with the kids. So I can yell at you and that that can make me feel a little bit better and let off some steam, but it's not going to get you to change. So the best way to get you to change is to actually be able to listen and be receptive as opposed to be defensive. Mm -hmm. So checking is now a good time. Are you available? I'd like to talk to you about something. It's, and that will, that can diffuse or prevent, I would say 50% of, of blow offs that people have. That doesn't sound too hard. It's not that hard. And you get yourself in the habit of doing it so that, you know, you call someone on the phone. Are you available right now? I have a, I have a question to ask you. I could see that it might be hard when you're in the fit of anger or in the yeah. moment of feeling angry yeah. and you want to dump and that would be a good time to what? Breathe or breathe. Take a break. Yeah, take a break. I mean, it's definitely harder for the person who's more uh, the, called the hailstorm, the person who's like a little bit more emotional uh, and has a hard time holding back. It's definitely yes. a challenge, but it's also going to be a challenge for the other person who would rather never talk. They need to make a time as well. Uh, at some point, they need to grant you a time. So if you say, like, I'd like to talk about such and such topic, are you available? I could say no, but I need to reschedule it, preferably within 24 hours. If not, sometime within, in the near future, because because that's not something I want. I don't want to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. But the, you're making the stretch to ask me to be available, and then I need to. And I think that most couples could have difficult conversations if they were in the right frame of mind and could really sit down and focus on it. Most of the problems happen when they get caught off guard, when they're not expecting it, when they're, they're not really fully present and ready to be able to hear what their spouse has to say. So this is step one in communication pitfalls and mistakes is find a good time, make sure it's a good time to talk. And if that seems really hard for you, know that there is going to be a ultimate side benefit, which is your partner will be more receptive to actually making changes when they're available to hear you. So it's worth it to stretch and grow and be able to hold back and make sure it's a good time instead of dumping because your partner will be more receptive to hear you and ultimately maybe will change, maybe not, yeah. but it's a possibility. What would you say another step would be? Um, so another step would be is the, a lot of, another problem in relationships is the negative, the criticism, the shaming and blaming that goes on. It's kind of like ties hand in hand with this. We were saying about finding the right time to share and, do you really want to just criticize or do you want, is there a need that you have? If you, if you talk, it's, so we're talking about the first step was finding the right time. The second step is talking in the right way. Is my spouse going to be receptive to criticism, shame, or blame? So for example, if I say like, 
you don't care about me, you never spend time with me, I'm not important to you. No, how do you hear that? Well, automatically I, I want to defend myself. Yes, you do. Or, yeah, yes, yeah. I do. I want to defend myself. Right. Um, or you don't either, <laughs> you know. Or, whereas if I could say, you know, I really want to spend time with you. I really like enjoy your company. I would, you know, like to figure out a way we can do that together. Sure, yeah, I want to spend time with you too. It's you get the complete opposite answer just by changing the way you, you talk about it. So, when you think about what you're frustrated about, when you think about the criticism, the things that you don't like, what is it that you want? Try to reframe that. So, like, what is it that I want? Flip it around. What is the unmet need? So instead of saying, "Why didn't you do that? Why did you do that?" No, well, I wouldn't say why. I wouldn't. Ask, no, not. <laughs> You know, you know, we're saying instead of saying something like that, blaming, it, right? Yeah, you, you would say, say I mm. want, I would like you to do such and such. Or I really, or think to myself, I really wanted Shlomo to fix that broken sink. And instead of accusing him, what could I maybe say? Yeah, I'm what, can you, you know, can you help me? The sink's broken and I really could use your help. You know, what do you suggest we do? As Much opposed to, better. You know, you didn't fix it and what's wrong with you? And I told you for two weeks already and we're, our water bill is so hot. Whatever it is. Mm. It doesn't it doesn't motivate a person. Now, look, you have some type of people that are just like, okay, I want you to get, get you off my back. So I'm just going to do it begrudgingly because like I don't want any tension. And you have people that, that do that. I'm one of them sometimes. Um, <laughs> but in general, you don't want to you don't want to rain by force. <laughs> you you want to be able to have a person, your spouse, join you and want to help you and you can use it with the kids too you know instead of saying to a, your kid why did you do that which is going to make them feel defensive and maybe why because they're afraid of your response or your reaction right so it would be good to learn how to communicate in this way with no shame and no blame which is what we teach couples and right. which what we teach couples it's really the premise of all of our programs especially our in-person work our on-site work Everything is how to learn no blame, no shame, because right. that's really everything. Yeah, because again, you're making the person feel bad, you're making them defensive, you're putting them on the defensive, and you're not gonna get what you want. So treat them in a respectful way, talk to them about what you need, or share what you're feeling, use I statements. So you, know, you can have a, f nobody can argue with your feelings. If you, you know, if I say like, I'm upset about this, well, yeah, you're upset about this, I can't, Say you're not upset about this <laughs> when you are, but if if you want to argue about the details, like you didn't call me last night, well, maybe I did call you. you did, your phone was busy. You can have an answer for everything. So you're saying when you really connect to what the need is, what you really need, you can't argue with that. So I or, need or, or, you to or fix the, this. Or your emotional reaction to what the other person did. So again, it's stop focusing on the other person and what they're doing wrong. Focus on yourself. What do I need? What do I feel? And when you do that it is going to create a more receptive partner who can actually listen to you. And when they can listen to you, they're much more likely to be able to meet your needs. So like back to the sink example, could I say, you know, I really feel nervous and uncared for and like I have to figure everything out myself when I see the sink not fixed for weeks at a time. And, right. I, and my need is I really know about myself that I need to feel cared for and not like overwhelmed that I have to figure out everything myself. Would that be an okay way to share? Yeah, and I don't have to, and I mean, and if you feel uncared for, that's what you're feeling. It's I can't say, you're not really feeling uncared for, you're feeling, that's, like you can't argue with someone's feelings. Uh -huh. You can argue with the facts, you can argue with what happened, and then you get into the whole season, he, she, he said, she said, but you can't argue with someone's feelings. So step two is really learn no blame, no shame communication. We have a, pro a process and a methodology that we use to teach couples it works amazingly. It's actually what saved our own marriage when we went to a therapist, an Imago relationship therapist 20 years ago. Thank God we found him. Um, and 20 years later, we're still here to tell the tale. But f learn no blame, no shame communication. And this step, really get in touch with what is the need under your complaint? What are you complaining about and why? Really, before you lash out, think for a minute. Like, why does this feel so pressing right now and connect inside of yourself to what the deeper emotion or need is like Shlomo saying and then the side benefit is your partner will be able to hear you much better right. great and you get you what you want so. yeah hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> you have a better chance at least. yeah so number three what would be a yeah. third so, step so it's kind of dovetailing to that is just the overall environment of negativity in a relationship is really bad for communication because 
if you're not feeling good about each other, if every interaction is negative, then, then you're not going to be able to communicate effectively either. You're not going to even talk, maybe even talk to each other. Mm. Uh, so you want to work on, even though it's not necessarily with the communication per se, you want to work on creating a more positive environment in the relationship. Because when things are good in the relationship, then you're able to see more good. You know, when you're, when you're feeling negative, you notice everything that's wrong, every flaw. Oh, you left your socks on the floor, you left your coffee mug by the bed, you didn't put it in the sink. Another thing you did, another thing you did, it's just like, it just compounds. It's a spiral, negative. Right, spiral. whereas if, you, if you're feeling good, so it's like, okay, I didn't notice that. And I, I don't notice the bad things. When I'm in a bad mood, then everything's wrong with the relationship. Isn't it true also that our brains are wired to see things that are negative due to our survival right. protective so, uh, yeah. mechanisms? So, we are looking, you know, our most basic goal is to stay alive. So anything that threatens that, or anything that feels danger, so we're kind of hypersensitive to, to looking at the negative. So we really have to make an intentional effort to be more positive. It's not just something that comes natural. Now some people grow up in homes that are like more positive or some that are more negative, but in general as human beings, we're going to be more, it's going to be much easier. That's going to be our default to look for the negative because like, this is threatening. Like, oh, I'm not getting my needs met. And like, another thing you're doing wrong, another thing you're doing wrong. I got to protect myself from you. So we need to make an intentional effort to make more positive. So that means noticing what's going on right, sharing appreciations, which we talk a lot about in our programs, like spending a, t a few minutes each day just sharing something you like about your spouse or something good they did. Just get you in the in the in the mode of looking for the good things. So this is really the Having opportunity fun. for you to create an environment of your home that you want it to be. And most of you out there, you don't want a home environment that's constant fighting, that's constant yelling and shaming. It's horrible for the kids. It's the home that I grew up in. We know it's bad, but sometimes we just don't know how to shift it. And that's why we really recommend you getting in touch with us to learn how to help your home environment. But you've got to learn to transform especially if you have an environment of constant nagging criticism, negativity. Negativity is really a killer. And there's only so much that a person can take until they snap. Uh, it's just not possible yeah, they for snap someone. snap or they just like don't care disconnect anymore. and become right. apathetic. It's like a bank account. You can't keep overdrafting your bank account and having zero money in there because you constantly withdraw, withdraw, withdraw. You've got to start making deposits of positive infusions in your relationship. Exactly. Right? So... Keep it more positive, and then you'll see that it'll be easier to communicate, even with whatever, whatever skills you already do have. You'll be, it'll be lighter, it'll be more productive, and you won't just feel this negative energy permeating the air. Yeah, and this is really going to be a, a shout out and a wake up call to you that if your home environment again is one of constant negativity, you've got to make a change now because it's 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 only a matter of time till people really suffer in the home from the constant assault of of negativity. And then finally. Another, another uh, to rhyme here. <laughs> negativity, reactivity. Reactivity is goes hand in hand with ne negativity, but specifically in conversation and communication, it's a really big problem because reactivity is what makes it really difficult for us to communicate and what makes your communication really bad. Because when when you share something with your spouse and they react, then you don't feel number one. You don't for, besides the fact that you don't get the problem resolved, you don't feel heard. You don't feel validated. Um, it doesn't encourage you to share because you feel like, well, whenever I bring up something, you're just going to discount my feelings anyway. So I might as well not share with you at all. So if you're in a relationship where you feel like your spouse doesn't want to open up, think about your reactivity. How do you respond? I was working with someone the other day. They were saying, you know, I, you know, I bit it used to bite his head off when he would talk. So he just doesn't, doesn't talk, talk anymore. So that that's case in point that that reactivity discourages the other person it doesn't make it feel safe because if I don't think I can talk if I can't get a word in edgewise if I feel like there's going to be a reaction I better it's better not to say a thing so how do you work in the reactivity so in our programs we teach a very very specific method of how to be able to really listen and respond with, without reactivity but the, the simplest thing to do is when the other person's talking don't say a thing don't interject yourself don't respond don't respond just, you can be silent. I mean, we, we teach couples you know, how to mirror back and repeat back what they said and the whole process, but at the very least, just don't say anything. They're expressing their feelings. You know, look like you're intent, like you're curious, you want to hear what they have to say, and don't, and don't talk, don't respond. Hmm. That, that's going to be hard for some of you, <laughs> harder than some of you that are much more verbal and more emotional, but 
again, it's, it all goes together with creating that environment that you want, having your spouse more participatory with you and more part, you know, interested in engaging with you. Cause if you're someone who's going to constantly react, you're not, it's not so fun to be around you. And don't respond. Doesn't mean just don't talk. It means no eye rolling or anything like that. Like you can be sitting there and going like, uh, you know, it's like, don't show that you're react. Don't show a reaction. So yeah, and if you and if you're not comfortable being silent, definitely get in touch with us through our website about I want to learn the five step process. I want to learn the real process for communicating. That's no blame, no shame. Uh, so I don't have to just be silent. <laughs> and right. let us know you watch this video, so we'll know what you mean. But yeah, I mean, being silent is better than yelling back and being reactive or, or defending yourself or explaining. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is a lot of insight into communication, why it can go so south, why it's so critical to get it right. And we hope that these four tips really gave you some insight and some real actionable tips to be able to shift the energy right now in all of your relationships. It was a pleasure talking with you. We can't wait to do the next video podcast episode of Can This Marriage Be Saved? please comment. Let us know what you thought of this video. Your comments will help our videos get seen and shown to more people. So it's really important to have that commenting, liking, clicking the bell notifications so we can get the word out to more families to be able to improve things at home. We are really excited to create the next episode. If you would like to put in comments, also some topics you'd like yeah, us to talk about. Topics, we're happy to address yeah, them. Yeah, we love answering questions. And um, we'll have some free resources for you in the comments section and uh, under this video, uh, namely our free guide, the 60 second action plan to a happy and healthy marriage. That's the first step introduction to our work to get to know us a little bit and we'll have more resources for you. And then beyond that, you can always contact us and apply to work with us in person at one of our destination retreats in beautiful tropical places or just around the United States. Around the corner in your backyard. Yeah, we might have someone who can work with you to teach you also the no blame, no shame process. So we look forward to seeing you again. Be sure to like and uh, hit the bell notifications. Take care. Take care.